Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another plug side chat. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, trip planning in the Bolt EV and uh, but specifically it's about how to match your speed to the availability of chargers. Now part of what's bringing this about is uh, I'm working with a better route planner. I'm submitting logs from some of my trips to them so that they can sort of create a better model for uh, the Bolt EV. You know, they recently, and I'll put a link below, they recently posted up a blog about the data that they've had so far in terms of the Bolt EV's efficiency at 65 miles per hour. I know my own data and everything else from other testing that I've done, and I'll also, you know, maybe illustrate in this video some of the efficiencies that I've seen at different speeds. The reason that's important is we still have a very diverse uh, availability of chargers. The Bolt EV has a very unique charging curve in terms of how it steps down for DC fast chargers. So those create some variables that can affect how you plan your trips and really what you're hoping to get out of certain stops and you know how long you charge between certain legs, how far you can expect to go with a certain percentage of battery. And I just wanted to speak to that a little bit because this goes into a little bit more advanced trip planning. Now, I mean, I know an ideal state would be every 50 miles of freeway, you have a half dozen 150 amp or faster DC fast chargers to choose from, and you can drive as fast as you want and not have to worry about it. We're not there yet. Uh, I mean, even Tesla's not there yet, right? That's why a lot of their trip planners will uh, advise their drivers on how fast they should be driving and what battery percentages they should be charging to, how long they should be spending at each charging location. So really, we're all in the same boat in terms of right now sort of being tethered to specific charging locations uh, along different routes and not really being able to deviate from that too much. And then when you get into setting and planning for ideal trip times, it becomes a little bit more difficult to do. And again, like I said, having a diversity of chargers to choose from different posted speed limits within different states, and then of course the Bolt EV's specific efficiency at certain speeds, it, it makes for these you know, to be a little bit more difficult to plan for. Uh, but once you sort of understand those at a fundamental level, you can make your trips a bit more effective. Just a quick note about this chart with the efficiencies. This is meant mostly as an example. Some of the numbers here align very closely with data that I have gathered and others have gathered. The numbers still seem to be a little bit off. I believe the rolling resistance might be a little bit higher and the aerodynamic drag might be a little bit better on the Bolt EV, which accounts for some of the areas where it starts to misalign. But for the most part, these efficiency numbers seem relatively close based on the speed of the Bolt EV. At level two charging, because you know, for better or worse, there's still a lot of sections of the United States where all you're going to have available to you is level two charging, uh, whether it's actual EVSCs that have been installed or you need to bring your own and plug into a NEMA 1450 like at an RV park, Campground of America. Well, those chargers for the Bolt EV, they're charging at about seven kilowatts. So your efficiency will actually impact how many miles you're getting per hour of charging on those level twos. Based on that charging rate, if you want to create a speed where it sort of matches minimum, you know, parity with your charging speed, uh, you're, you're looking at maintaining a speed of about 40 to 45 miles per hour in the Bolt EV. So it's really not that fast, but at the same time, if you pair up your speed that way, uh, relying on level two charging only, assuming you start with the full battery, you can still easily drive over 500 miles in a single day. The, the difficulty is, of course, you're going to spend a good portion of that time charging. So those locations need to offer you something to do with that, that amount of time, right? You're looking at about probably six to eight hours worth of charging over the course of the day. 
also this gives you an idea of if you need to bridge the gap for what I would consider sort of middle distance trips, maybe uh, three to 400 miles, maybe you just need to stop for an hour and a half or two hours, right? As long as you pair your speed or match it uh, with how far you're going. But when you get into the realm of DC fast chargers, it becomes a little bit more interesting. So we still have a large population of 60-ish amp, uh, so I'll, I'll just call them 24 kilowatt chargers. And these are prevalent at, at business sites where they can't really put in three-phase power. Uh, GM dealerships have also been putting in uh, those 24 kilowatt chargers. Uh, BMW dealerships, uh, a lot of other dealerships have, they're sort of a low cost solution that provides their customers with an alternative uh, for public uh, charging infrastructure. At those rates, the net power that you're getting into the battery, really it's, it's about 20 kilowatts. At that rate, given the speeds and efficiency of the Bolt EV, they're really ideal for if you're traveling between about 65 and 70 miles an hour. Anything faster than uh, 65 miles an hour and you start to uh, lose the uh, effectiveness of those chargers. So basically your efficiency at say 70 miles an hour of about 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour, that's actually going to make it so that when you're charging you're really only getting about 70 miles per hour of charging. So it creates a situation of, like I said, parity between driving speeds and charging time. And you know, that's, that's basically the minimum you'd want to get because below that, then it's actually, you're going to spend more time charging than you're going to spend driving. And that's really sort of negative, but we get into, you know, the hundred amp chargers, really they're 35 kilowatt, but because they go up to 500 volts, a lot of times are listed as 50 kilowatt chargers. A, a good example of that is the drive the arc chargers that were built along Interstate 80 in California. Those 100 amp chargers, they actually support speeds in the Bolt EV up to about as high as you're going to see posted in the United States. Even at 80 mile per hour driving, you're going to be charging at about the same speed on those 100 amp chargers based on the efficiency of the Bolt EV at 80 miles per hour. Because your fastest trip speeds are driving as fast as is legal on those roads typically, 100 amp charging means that you really shouldn't slow down on most roads. Say in California, if you're driving 65 to 70 miles per hour, 100 amp charging is more than sufficient to where you shouldn't feel the need to slow down unless you're not going to be able to make your next charging location. Because that's really, <laughs> The most important aspect is you, you want to get to where you need to go. And then you get to 125 amp charging. Well, really, that actually creates parity all the way up to the fastest speeds that the Bolt EV can be driven at. So the Bolt EV is electronically governed at about 92 to 93 miles per hour. If you are driving pegged at 93 miles per hour, 125 amp charging will actually support uh, those speeds. So essentially that's the point at which you see parity. So if you want to drive at 93 miles an hour and you have 125 amp charging available, you know, have at it. So basically though, the thing to note is again, though, you are creating parity. And so you're going to spend the exact amount of time driving as you are charging. If you go to the 150 amp charging on that will actually changes things because even at the fastest speeds the Bolt EV is able to drive at, you're regaining or recouping over a hundred miles uh, per hour of charging. So you're actually net gaining on your charging speeds. Uh, and, and for those of you who you know do own Teslas or whatever, this is exactly why you don't ever need to slow down really. The charging rates, even on something like a Model X, are so high that despite the Model X being a really inefficient vehicle, it doesn't behoove you to slow down. Not for best trip speeds anyway, because your charging is always going to outstrip the inefficiency of your vehicle. The thing to be aware of is these efficiency numbers are assuming a baseline of efficiency. So normal temperatures, normal load, whatnot. But if you're 
heavily using the climate control if you're heavily laden say you have four adult passengers and gear and equipment you're you're using the uh, roof racks and you have like kayaks or snowboards or bodyboards or whatever up there those all do impact your efficiency along with weather so it and i i hope people aren't driving 80 miles an hour in you know harsh winter weather but maybe they are but those will all have an impact on your efficiency and so even with 150 amp chargers if you start to drop below about two miles per kilowatt hour efficiency there's a point at which it does actually benefit you to slow down because you know it really is that parity point at which you lose ground and you know an example of this and like i said i'll i'll include this link in below the video a better route planner they uh, noted that on their 600 mile road trip theoretical that the bull tv would take I believe it was 12 hours and 20 minutes uh, to complete that trip. And I asked about the details of it, and it was apparently 75 miles per hour, and I think they said 200 kilometer legs. And knowing what I know about the Bolt EV, that trip is easily doable in about 11 hours. So I'm not sure what they have in terms of modeling for why it was going to be an 11 or why it was going to be 12 hours and 20 minutes. I'm not sure exactly why the trip planner is still showing those slower speeds, but it might be because they're matching up uh, slower charging speeds and incorrect efficiency numbers with the distance that the Bolt EV would travel. Anyway, I, I hope this is, is helpful because, uh, like I said, I think if you know based on how far you need to travel and the chargers that are available, what the Bolt EV's efficiency is at different speeds, you can adjust your speed accordingly. So if I were going to do a trip where I was relying only on level two charging, if possible, I would try to drive on roads that allowed 45 mile per hour driving. If I was on a trip where only 24 to 25 kilowatt DC fast charging was available, I'd try to maintain a driving speed of about 65 miles per hour if possible. And then anything after that, I really wouldn't care unless weather conditions or specific changes to the Bolt EV like load or roof racks or something like that were going to affect my efficiency negatively. And then I would adjust accordingly. Like I said, maybe 100 amp charging if I were driving through areas of the United States that had 80 to 85 mile an hour posted speed limits, maybe I would try to drive as slow as possible legally and safely. I hope this was useful. I hope uh, this kind of helps you maybe plan longer trips a little bit better. I'd love to hear what you think, uh, what your, you know, what your experiences are. And, uh, you know, I'll, we'll try to, to maybe extrapolate this out to other vehicles in the future as well. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And uh, thank you for watching.